Astra, is anyone listening? It's Celine. Maybe close to four years ago now, when the first seeds were being planted. And we're thinking about projects for the future, and we're having these discussions with uh, Hari Tikanen, uh, Housemark's co founder and creative director. And we just went through this process, we were just collecting ideas and just going completely wild, thinking, okay, what would be your absolute like dream project if you didn't have to compromise on anything? and just dared to dream, you know? And immediately, like, a couple of really strong elements came up. I mean, yeah, dark sci-fi, that's always been a, you know, really alluring thing for me. Uh, time travel, of course, one of my favorite uh, genres, so to speak, or storytelling styles. Then we thought, okay, like, uh, maybe an unconventional, maybe female protagonist carrying some kind of trauma, uh, some, some kind of psychological horror, of course, has always been fascinating. So it wasn't like, uh, you know, a very crystallized idea that, you know, I just saw in my sleep or something and just said, okay, I want to make this. It was just kind of following like this internal uh, rule of cool and this kind of really organic creative process where we're just collecting all of the, all of the cool things we would like to really see in a game ourselves. Dialogue. 30 minutes since last crash. This forest contains extensive ruins of a xenotype civilization. Ancient walls, foundations, and statues. The forest is a swamp now. That's... That can't be here. So, as you know, our story is that we're following Selene, uh, uh, an astronaut who crash lands on this hostile alien planet called Astropos. And on this planet, of course, we need to have all kinds of hostile flora and fauna to uh, make her survival quite difficult. So, yeah, for the enemies in particular, I think one of the biggest inspirations there was... Uh, of course, we wanted to make them feel quite hostile and menacing. And also alien. And for that, we actually looked at deep sea creatures, because they were kind of the most alien-looking thing we could find on Earth, you know, as a reference. And they, as you know, they, they, they've adapted to those dark environments that they live in to uh, develop a bioluminescence, which is a really alien property where the body, of course, just uh, glows in the dark, right? And we thought that that combination of just, uh, you know, dark materials with like these bright highlights created this really kind of uh, unsettling look that also as a bonus pops and reads really well from the gameplay perspective as well so that's the that's one one influence for us and another one of course was uh, the lovecraftian influences are undeniable so of course we want to have that eldritch kind of uh, horror kind of aesthetic and a lot of these creatures are fairly, uh, there are monstrosities that do have a lot of these tentacles, as you mentioned as well. And from an implementation standpoint, basically what we've done is we have the more traditional kind of anime meshes, but on top of that we've added all of these uh, VFX-driven tentacles and healers that are fully dynamic elements. So whether the enemy is doing an attack preparation or reacting to a hit, or exploding gloriously, you know, after you deal enough damage. Uh, all of these elements are just adapting to geometry, you know, reacting, twitching in a fully dynamic way. And that's been one of our goals throughout the VFX treatment and I guess for the, the general feedback loop for this game in general, to have that really visceral and satisfying feedback loop with everything that you interact with. Uh, we do have a, a pretty diverse range of enemies. Actually, each biome or each environment in the game has its own unique enemy encounters that players can find. And, you know, we have a pretty standard kind of split across, you know, small enemies that appear in larger numbers but are easier to dispatch. Uh, the larger brute style enemies that come more infrequently but they're a bit more bullet spongy, put up more of a, a challenge. 
uh, flying enemies, you know, turrets that just kind of populate the level with more uh, projectiles and uh, you know, avoidance gameplay. So we have a pretty diverse set of, uh, of enemies that we combine in many different combinations in each level to create a pretty uh, broad range of uh, combat scenarios, right? So in addition to that, of course, there's some extra layers. I mean, there might be some, some elite enemies that you might encounter, you know, in some darker corners of these levels as uh, surprises. And we absolutely do have uh, bosses as well that uh, yeah, are going to be more dramatic fights in intensity. Yes, we do. We do have bosses. I think they are. They have been staples of our formula for our previous games, and as you said, for arcade arcade games in general. And you know, they they act as pretty solid, both uh, as skill checks, just as like barriers for you to that you need to overcome to reach the next area, of course. Uh, but also as uh, as culminations of all of the bullet hell, uh, diverse type of, of challenges and spectacle of course that we do build up throughout each environment so i, I kind of want to refrain from going into too much detail because a lot of these are really cool moments that we really want players to discover uh, by themselves but let's just say that we have put a lot of effort into uh, a lot of love into our bosses to make sure that each one has its own distinct personality its own role in the story its own majestic aura and absolutely a deep and satisfying challenge that will you know keep you coming back for more and will make you feel quite a relief when you overcome them the crash the attack my death the crash the attack my death trapped in this endless cycle is no escape. 